Barefoot shoes. What are they? And as a footballer, why should you care about them? Well, normally on this channel, I just focus on reviewing the latest football boots so that you can find a great option for when you're on the pitch. But the truth is most of us are only gonna be wearing our boots for a few hours throughout the week. And the other 90% of the time, we're just gonna be wearing casual footwear as we either go to school, go to work, or hit the gym. So as an athlete or a footballer, what should you be looking for when you go to pick out an everyday shoe? Well, for some people, that's where barefoot shoes are gonna come in and that's what we're gonna cover in this video. And of course, at the end of the video, I'll give you some of my personal favorite recommendations for casual footwear. So to kick things off, for those of you who don't know, what are barefoot shoes? So barefoot shoes were born out of the minimalist footwear movement that really started to gain popularity about a decade ago. And the entire point of barefoot shoes, like the ones I'm holding in my hands right now, are that they're supposed to mimic the feeling of walking and running in your bare feet. And in order to do that successfully, barefoot shoes focus on three main characteristics. And the first key characteristic and one of the most important is going to be a wide toe box. So these are a pair of field grounds from a smaller German company and we can see if we just compare the shape of the toe box with a conventional pair of Vans, you can see that they are much wider towards the front of that toe box. But not only are they actually wider, but they also just generally have a more natural and anatomical shape, as in they're not kind of torpedo shaped like the Vans are, where they basically have a similar angle at both the little toe and the big toe. They're actually a little bit longer towards where your big toe would be and then they slowly taper out towards the sides. In other words, you're just gonna have a lot more volume for your toes to spread out at the end of a barefoot shoe compared to a conventional shoe. And the second key characteristic of a barefoot shoe is going to be a thin and minimal sole. In fact, the rubber sole on this shoe here is literally only a few millimeters, and because it's thin, it's also extremely flexible. When you compare these shoes side by side, you can see just how much thicker the soles are on the Vans, and not only that, they're also just gonna be a little bit bulkier and harder to bend. And the third and final characteristic of a barefoot shoe is that they are zero drop. And all that means is that the sole is going to have the exact same height at the heel of the shoe all the way to the toe of the shoe. So there's not going to be any heel elevation or toe spring, which you sometimes find in certain running shoes. So now we've gone over what barefoot shoes are. Next, let's talk about why they're becoming more popular among athletes. So off the pitch, I've been wearing barefoot shoes pretty consistently for about the last five years. And why I like them so much and why I think so many other people are growing to like them as well boils down to two main things. And those things are going to be comfort and functionality. So let's start off by addressing the comfort factor. Now, almost anyone who's bought a pair of football boots or pretty much any other shoe for that matter knows that when you're ordering shoes online, sizing can be a complete guessing game. And even in some instances where you actually order the right size, sometimes you get your shoes and the fit just isn't right. They might be too restrictive in the midfoot, too narrow towards the toe box, or give you irritation towards the heel. Now, while there is gonna be some variation in the exact shape and size between different barefoot shoe brands, when going true to size, I've had a pretty good experience after ordering from more than three different brands. And for me, when I first got a pair of shoes, they kind of turned my concept of comfort and fit on its head. Because before I picked up a pair of more minimalist shoes, I actually thought that Vans were wide. So I'd come to expect that this was pretty much the most space you could get out of the front of a shoe, when it turns out you could actually get as much as this. And actually, when I first got this pair a couple years ago, I almost felt like I had too much space at the front of the shoe. But then after walking in them over the course of a few weeks and months, the craziest thing started to happen. And that's that my feet slowly started to spread out and actually get a little bit wider. And over the years, this has actually happened so much that shoes like Vans are actually a little bit more uncomfortable to get into. And not only do I notice a lot more comfort at the front of the toe box, but I'm also really appreciative of these more flexible soles because they just allow my foot to bend a lot more naturally towards the midfoot. And that's really important because as you're walking or running, you want your feet to be able to pronate naturally without expending a lot of energy trying to bend the sole of your shoe. And that pretty much takes us straight into functionality because the main reason I actually got barefoot shoes in the first place was to use them as a workout shoe. Because I used to wear running shoes to the gym and I started to get irritated just by how thick the sole was. I found that towards the heel area, there was just too much foam and padding, especially when I was doing resistance exercises like squatting, deadlifts, or lunges that required a lot of sensitivity. It got to the point in the gym where sometimes I would just take my shoes off when I was squatting and go in my socks just so that I could get that contact with the ground. But ultimately, I just wanted to find a shoe that I could feel comfortable doing all of those different movements in. And as far as a great workout shoe, I actually ended up going with this pair called Tolos. These are actually 
from a smaller American company, and I have been using these so heavily over about the past year and a half. They used to be clean white, and now they look kind of disgusting, but nevertheless, a great shoe. Now, it started off that I would just use these shoes while working out, and then eventually I took them on walks, and then eventually on runs, and then eventually just doing everyday tasks. And soon enough, barefoot shoes just slowly started to replace my other footwear. Now, don't get me wrong, depending on the occasion, I'll still throw on my Vans or some dress shoes if I'm looking to do something formal. But having worn barefoot shoes for so long, it's definitely a noticeable transition when I go back to traditional footwear. So if you're a footballer, would I recommend you pick up a pair of minimalist shoes? Well, in one word, yeah. Because most players I know are active and athletic outside the pitch, and they would definitely get some benefits from barefoot shoes. And especially if you're looking for a good pair of gym shoes, I think minimalist footwear is a must. I personally like wearing these in the gym for resistance training and plyometrics, just because the wide toe box is going to allow your feet to spread out naturally and you're going to get great contact with the ground. And not only are your major muscle groups going to get a great workout, but you're also probably going to notice a little bit of a workout with your feet as well, as you're going to be using some muscles that might be a little bit fatigued or underused depending on the shoes you've been wearing in the past. And then outside the gym, I also really like wearing these kinds of shoes on walks or hikes. And to be honest, you can really just throw them on in most situations you'd typically be wearing a sneaker. And as footballers, we may be wearing some pretty aggressive shaped boots for one to two hours out of the day. And to be honest, this pair of F50s that I have here are actually pretty average width compared to most boots. But just look at the comparison you see between this minimalist shoe here and the F50. And I think that transitioning from a more aggressive shaped boot like this to a more natural barefoot shoe later in the day is just going to allow your feet to spread out and relax. But if you are considering picking up a pair of barefoot shoes, there are some important things to consider. And the first major major thing to take note of is that it is going to be a slight adjustment moving to a pair of shoes like this. First up, when it comes to walking, concrete and asphalt are really hard surfaces. And if you're someone who really strikes hard with your heel when you walk, you're going to feel it when you move to shoes like this. But the cool thing is your walking style will actually naturally adapt over time if you wear a pair of more minimalist shoes. You just want to be sure to not do too much too fast, so just gradually wear them more and more over the course of a few days and weeks. Now, when it comes to running, you cannot heel strike in barefoot shoes. It's just going to be really painful for your ankles, for your knees, for your hips, and it's just not going to be a fun time. Instead, when you're wearing a pair of shoes with a sole this thin, you're going to want to either midfoot strike or toe strike when you're running. And I'm a footballer, not a runner, so I'll leave a video in the description that perfectly explains the difference between a toe strike and a heel strike. It's a pretty simple technique, and you can get it down really quickly. And then the final thing to consider is something I touched on already, and that's if you wear barefoot shoes for long enough, your feet will get a bit wider, especially especially towards the toe box. And that can be pretty tough if you're a footballer because so many boots tend to have a pretty aggressive and narrow toe box. But as we've discussed a lot on this channel, it's not the end of the world because there are tons of boots that are gonna offer a more wide and accommodating toe box. And for me, I definitely noticed that when I started to wear barefoot shoes more and more, I also started to gravitate towards wider fitting football boots. That's why this pair of New Balance 442 V2 Pros was heavy in my rotation last year because it has so much space towards the front of the boot. Now brands like Mizuno and New Balance tend to do really well when it comes to the wide football boots, but almost every brand has at least one offering that's going to be decent for wide feet. And I'll leave a link in the description to my video where I go over the best boots for wide footed players. Also, almost any leather boot is going to be a solid option as well because soft, high quality leather towards the front of the boot is going to stretch over time, giving you a slightly more comfortable fit. All right, so finally, let's wrap things up with my favorite recommendations for barefoot shoes. So the main two brands I've had the most success with are Feel Grounds and Tolos. Now, Feel Grounds are the smaller German company I mentioned, and in my opinion, they do great when it comes to just casual, everyday lifestyle shoes. This is their original knit model. It's extremely comfortable, has a really soft, flexible knit upper here, and a really thin sole. I mean, you can really easily just roll these all the way up top to bottom. I like these especially for the summer because that knit is so breathable, so they're not going to get really sweaty. To me, I almost think of these as like a van equivalent, so I wear them in similar situations. And then Feel Grounds also has their original model in this luxe material that is almost like a faux leather. This one is a little bit easier to clean, which I like because it has this slick matte finish. And since it has that faux leather appearance, I also like to wear it in slightly more formal circumstances. And then Feel Grounds also just came out with a workout shoe that I have here. I literally just got it a few days ago, so I've hardly had the chance to use it, but I've been pretty impressed with it so far. The upper is still going to have a really nice knit material, but I think the sole is about 
about one or two millimeters thicker than the other field ground shoes, just to give them a little bit durability for more athletic wear. And then the other shoe I've absolutely loved is my pair of the Tolos. Now I believe the model name for this is the Archetype, and it is pretty much the only shoe that Tolos makes. And I actually kind of like the idea of a company only making one shoe because it makes for a really easy shopping experience. You don't really have to think about what model you should go for. I think they only offer this in two colors. You can get it in black or white. And I don't really know what else to say. These are just such a well-built workout shoe. They have a really soft, breathable upper. I like that they have a more rubber area at the end here just to protect the front of the toe box. And despite the fact that I've used these really heavily over the past 18 months, they still have a ton of tread on the outsole. Usually after I'm finished with a session at the pitch, these are the shoes I change into after taking off my boots. And not only that, but you might be surprised to know these are also a lot of fun to play football in. So if I ever want to play on a flat surface like asphalt or an indoor court, these are what I grab. I just find that they give me a really clean touch on the ball and they're a bit more comfortable than a lot of other indoor shoes that are on the market. Now both Field Grounds and Tolos are a little bit more premium premium when it comes to the price point. Most of their models are going to retail for a little over $100, but sometimes you can find them on sale. But keep in mind, these are just my favorite models, and there are tons of different options out there in the minimalist footwear space. So I'd recommend that you look around at a few different models to see if you can find one that's appealing for you and in your budget. And guys, that is going to do it for this video. So please let me know in the comments below if you've ever tried on a pair of barefoot shoes. And if you haven't, let me know if you think based on this video, you might be interested in picking up a pair. Guys, please leave a like if you've enjoyed. I really hope that this video has been helpful and I will see you in the next one.